So we missed out on winning the League Cup last season, but this year we've got another chance to try and win it once again. We're in the semi-finals of the League Cup today against Brighton, and hopefully they're going to be easy opposition. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco. Today we've got two games for you. We're at home to top of the table Arsenal before we play the home leg of the Carabao Cups League Cup semi-final against Brighton and Hove Albion. Since you last here, things have been pretty decent actually. You were last here when we had that shock 4-2 loss to, to Norwich, which I still can't get over how, how ridiculous that was. Uh, and then we beat we Stoke 4-0 as well, which is pretty decent. The game afterwards, we lost 2-0 to West Ham. It was a game which... Really, I think we should have won. We were the better side. We had more shots. We had more possession and things like that. Their two goals came from unmarked men at the back post and crosses coming in and just tapping it at the back post, basically. So that's how we lost to West Ham. But West Ham are doing well this season. They're trying to hunt down Champions League places. So they're doing all right this season. So it was, you know, fair enough to lose to them. Game after that, though, we played Derby County, who are sitting down in the relegation zone. A comfortable 3-1 win over them. Uh, they got a consolation goal, but we absolutely dominated that game, run it from start to finish. That was a good performance from the boys. We then played Aston Villa in the FA Cup hammer time scoring himself a hat trick there to make sure we get ourselves into the fourth round who we play at Grimsby again playing we haven't played in seven seasons and now this season we're playing them twice both in the cup so that's pretty interesting so the next episode will probably be in the Grimsby game for example in the context of a league we then had a huge win against Swansea Swansea was sitting sixth at the time uh, so it was fantastic to beat them 3-1 we actually played really well Swansea didn't have much of a chance in that we really dominated it to be fair and perhaps could have got one or two more goals there but hammer time scoring two and Angel Gomez getting one just after half time so it was a fantastic result that for us really really put some good performances in and we've we've marched our way up the table a little bit but then last time out we had a shock 2-1 loss to Middlesbrough Middlesbrough fighting for survival already at this stage of the season and um, we came against them we had a bit of a Norwich game really but we just somehow lost against them I don't know how we did it but we just we just did so I was very cross with the boys and hopefully today we can bounce back against Arsenal but they are top of the table and apart from the cup games the next run of league games are against really really tough opposition we've got Arsenal who are sitting in first Everton who are sitting ninth at the moment just ahead of us in the table but earlier on the season we played them they were right up there uh, looking for first place so Everton are going to be a hard team to come up against uh, we then got the more Brighton and Grimsby games and then Chelsea come up there seventh at the moment they're pretty decent Tottenham also sitting in eighth so they're ahead of us they're a decent side then we've got Man City and Man United sitting third and second and then Liverpool tops it off and they're sitting in fourth so these next front of league games they could all be losses really and realistically they probably will be We've also made a ton of transfers as well. Um, most of them have all been free transfers, those free transfers that we made. Um, two episodes ago now, we started looking at them and we just thought that we made those free transfers. They've all come through now. Most of them have all signed and um, coming from different clubs on free transfers. Turns out you do need a work permit to play in the 23 side. Um, so they can't actually play in the 23s. No one wants them on loan either, even when I offer them to other clubs for absolutely nothing. Um, so we, we're literally just wasting money on wages for players that can't do anything and won't go out on loan anywhere. Uh, Pajovic, that partisan winger, has gone on loan to Roma, so he's like the only one that's basically gone on loan. He's gone on loan, they're paying 100% of his wages and £100,000 per month as well. So that £500,000 will probably cover all those players that we've we've brought in for free. So come summertime, because they can't get work permits, because they can't play in the 23s and because no one wants them on loan, they're probably going to be sold, hopefully, and hopefully for a fair bit of money, like Sean Smith, for example, an American guy, nearly valued at a million pounds. So, you know, potentially he could go for a million pounds. That would be fantastic. Of course, that was that guy that we spoke about last time, if we can find it. Uh, Estella, who's worth 10 million pounds, for example. No one wants him on loan, which is very weird. I thought someone would want him, but they don't. So if we can then sell him for even for half of that, 5 million pounds, that would be fantastic of a free transfer. Right then, this is the lineup for today's game against Arsenal. Reynolds starts himself in goal. He's been very, very good recently, so I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops more and more and more. Uh, Masovic, Williams, Benteke and Johnson start at that back line. Kirby Ashley's picked up an injury recently he's coming back from it now but he's, he's looking all right uh jesus jimenez has come back from loan as well from porto he's at the strike that we bought had to get a work permit so we sent him on loan elsewhere to get that work permit he's back now but injured for a few weeks but he will be starting probably next episode or not maybe not quite next episode because that's quite soon maybe in the you know towards the end of the season he'll start games Coyle, Jalapeno and Perrier make up that midfield three with Gomez and Lukasic on the wings and then Hammer Time, who's in absolutely incredible form at the moment, scored 23 goals total this season in 23 games. Hopefully today he adds to that and we get a nice win against Arsenal. 
Right, kickoff is upon us. Arsenal kicking off with the home side though, so we've been very nice and polite letting them kick off. As you can see, then Arsenal, I've got to show the table again. I keep forgetting to do this, I keep forgetting to show you the table. Uh, we're currently sitting in 10th after all those results, which I think has gone down from last time, despite us doing very, very well. But we sit in 10th from 34 points at the moment, uh, but a win would take us as high as 8th and things like that. So we're still looking comfortable to try and chase down Europa League places. I think the most likely way to do that, though, is by winning the, the League Cup, which we're in the semi-final of later on in this episode, of course. I think we'll probably drop down the table a few places. Well, actually, maybe not that many. We'll probably drop down as far as 12th, 13th at most. I can't see us going anywhere below there with West Brom on 21 points, for example. But, you know, potentially we could drop a lot of points in these next few games coming against some really, really decent sides. The next games that we play, they're, they're all teams above us. The only team that we don't play is Swansea. And we, we beat them, didn't we? In West Ham, we lost to them. But all the other, all the other teams in the top eight, uh, top ten rather, we're playing. So it's, it's going to be a trickier run of fixtures these next seven games. As Arsenal, I've gone, I've gone one nil up. I barely noticed that as I was looking at the table. But they have just gone one nil up. And, um, of course, that makes our challenge even harder now if we lose this game. Oh, they've just got another one. I was, I was literally doing some like tactical stuff there to just try and help us out. But Wendell has been at 2-0 to Arsenal 30 minutes into this game. We've only had the two shots. They've had seven. They've done pretty well so far today. The top of the league for a reason. Um, and that reason is that Man United have had a few games off because they played in the Club World Championships. If Man United has played all their games, they'd be top of the table and Arsenal would be second. Of course, though, we do play Man United in a few games' time. If we beat them, then there's a chance, actually, that Arsenal may keep their top of the table position. And that'd be quite nice, actually, because, obviously, Arsenal have not won. Oh, Lacassette came so close there, but he just couldn't keep a shot down. He's been really poor this season, actually. And I'm starting to think, perhaps, we do look for another right winger. His potential is just going down and down and down all the time. He's barely improved since the start of last season. So, I'm, I'm thinking that, although I absolutely adore him and he's one of our own, Perhaps it is time to, to move him on and get someone else inside. I was saying, though, it would be nice if Arsenal won the league, because obviously they've not won it for a long time. And Man United have won the league literally every season but one in this save so far. And um, I want someone else to win it. So there we go. Free kick now for Arsenal in this second half. It's cleared away there, but only as far as Rossi, an Arsenal player, who puts it into Isaac. Isaac to Taylor. Taylor, who is a star man of the England squad, my England squad that I've got at the moment. He's actually pretty decent on the right-hand side. We tried to sign him a few seasons ago when he was a real youngster, but Arsenal just said no, and for clear reasons why. He's one of the best players in the world, to be fair, on that right-hand side of the field. Right, let's make some changes then. Facundo Vieira can come on for his first appearance since he was injured last episode. He's been out for a long time, so we'll be raring to go and get some game time. But actually saying that, I reckon we keep Hammer Time up front. We put Vieira on the wing instead of Lukasic, um, because he has played well on the wings when he's played there as well. Pandolfi can come on for Perrier as well, and they have a two change that we'll make right now, but I don't know if they're going to be game-changing substitutes that are going to win us the game, unfortunately. I mean, it's been a real drab match, this one, to be fair. Short and sharp, short and quick. Nothing's really gone on now. We've got a chance actually to come forward now as Gomez puts it into Hammer Time, who... Hits the post. I thought we would have got a consolation goal there. It's been relatively even, actually, looking at the stats here. I think Arsenal probably had a lot more possession. Um, not much more possession, but they've had more. They've obviously been the better side here, being more clinical with their chances that they've had. They're top of the league for a reason, of course. We're not at that level yet to be beating teams like Arsenal. But only losing 2-0 and keeping a relatively close stat-wise game, you know, it's relatively even. I reckon that we've got, given a good account of ourselves there. So as it turns out, I thought I had uh, an extra hour before I go to university for a lecture. Turns out, I don't. So uh, I'm going to have to call it here very quickly. You're not going to notice anything, but I'm going to have to do this this Brighton game much later on in the day, perhaps even tomorrow now. I don't know. So, um, I mean, it's going to be a matter of seconds for you until we get to the Brighton game. But for me, I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. And uh, as if by magic, I'm back again. Now, Southampton, the main offer of £19 million up front, rising to £21 million for Kobayashi. And if I'm being honest with you here, I'm, I'm ears. I'm listening to this. He's not really massively improved since he arrived here, to be fair. Like, he's still two and a half star current ability. He's sort of bounced between two and a half star and three star. But at the moment, two and a half star. He's lost his five star potential as well. So that's something as well. Um, he's only the third best centre back we've got. Roy Sean Williams is better than Kobe Ash. We've got Garcia, who is just as good as him. 21 and a half million is a lot of money. Hiroshima get 5 million of that, actually, so that does decrease how much we get, but I guess that is the percentage that they have to get paid. His release fee is 36 million, though, and that is a 15 million pound drop from what they're actually offering. And uh, I do like him. If this offer was a lot closer to 36 million, I accept it, but right now, because it's non negotiable, I can't say give me 36 million instead. 
I'm not going to say yes. We're going to say no for now. But if they come back, I say the, the the offer isn't good enough. That's what we'll say. If they come back and say, look, I'll tell you what, boys, you know, we'll we'll pay you 30 million instead. We'll pay you 32 million instead. I'll let him go. Swindon want per shares as well. He's, I mean, he, he probably should go. He's valued at 1.4 million. They're literally offering me 1.4 million after 50 games and things like that. So we'll accept that for per shares. The thing with Kobayashi is, even if we got like 30 million, we're selling a player who's half as good as Benteke for nearly the full price that we spent on Benteke. So that does then make the Benteke deal feel a lot better considering we paid 40 million for him. But they've come back and they want Rashawn Williams now instead. Now, Rashawn Williams, will I let him go? He's valued at 12.75 million. They're offering me more than that. Do I want Rashawn to go though? Because I, I, I do like Rashawn. He's a lovely man. We, he's been here for a long time as well. He's been here since our first season in the championship. We got him on a free. But he is better than... He, he is better than Kobayashi. So I don't want him to go. And they're offering more for Kobayashi as well. So I'm going to reject that from Southampton. I, I want to quickly look here. Right, let's have a quick look. at Just look in the player search. Right, new search. We just want central defender... Um, we want at least three star current ability according to scouting, so we'll have a look at that as well. At least three stars, please. Okay, uh, we'll go interested as well because obviously we want players to be interested in signing for us. And there's a few guys here that you know we potentially could get. We then have to actually think about work permits and stuff like that, actually, because I, I did forget work permits. Like, I tried to sign this guy, Vinicius, for. The past two seasons, but he just can't get his work permits and things like that because he just he isn't playing international football, which is annoying. Actually, we need to make it um, natural centre back because then just like defence midfielders that can sort of play centre back. Natural centre backs, Oscar Galago, you know, he could be a guy we could get him. We'd have to spend a lot of money to get him back from or to get him from West Ham. He's on £94,000 a week as well, so that's maybe not the best. I mean, this guy, Martins, after. You get a work permit after appeal, apparently. He, he looks all right. Three and a half star credit ability. Has the potential to get four stars. So that's pretty good. We could get him for about 18 million, apparently. Transfer transfer status. His asking price is... To, oh, to be fair, then. If we sell Kobayashi, I'm happy to try and get this guy, maybe. He's interested in the transfer. Potentially wants to come. He's better than Kobayashi by quite a significant amount as well. Right. This is, this is going a bit crazy now, but let's look at Kobayashi then. Let's offer him out, first of all, for 36 and a bit million. All right? Offer to clubs for, what's his minimum fee? It's 36.5, I think, isn't it? 36.5. Offer to clubs for that. See, see who bites on 36.5 million. If someone does, he's gone. Guarantee you now he's going to get absolutely mental with me. Um, no one wants him, apparently. No one wants him for 36 million, which is all right. To be fair, that's not too bad. Let's offer him for 32 instead then. See see who bites on 32 million. Well, we've actually got to play the game first. So we, we'll carry on the episode and see who bites on 32 million. But if no one bites on 30 plus million, um, he's probably going to have to stay, I think. Although saying that, you know, 25 million, we could let him go for that. We get the other guy in for cheaper. We're still making profit in a way. So I wouldn't be too adverse to that. We'll have to see how things go. You know what? I'm pretty happy with the team, actually, from, from last time out. We may bring Pandolfi on just to give him a little run out instead of Perrier, for example. Um... There's, there's a bit more orange, but they have decent partnerships still, at least, apparently. Actually, no, we'll, we'll switch the the more attacking formation. Hammer time, back as an advanced forward, please. Uh, we'll bring Diaz on, obviously, for Liam Coyle. Do we bring Kobayashi on for, for one of the centre-backs? I reckon we bring Kobayashi on, just showcase his talents. You know, people can get interested in him, see what they like. Um, if he plays well, maybe someone will offer 36 million. All right, kick-off is upon us here in the, in the League Cup semi-final. We're here once again. Last season... We, uh, we came against Burnley, didn't we, in the in the semi-final. And I think they gave us a good run for our money in the first leg. I think it was like a draw in the first leg before we um, we dominated the second leg, basically. So hopefully we'll learn from our mistakes last season. We try and actually become a bit more attacking-minded this year. Perhaps we try and just decide to get the job done in the first leg, for example. That would make life a lot more easier for me. A lot less stress in my life as well if we do the first leg. Uh, to get the job done in the first leg, rather, as Gomez comes forward, puts it in to the back post of Le Classic, who heads it down, but it's clear. But it's back to Le Classic. There he is. He's banged it. It's his second goal of the season. Le Classic is a player we need to talk about. Now, I may have spoken about him last episode. I can't remember now. I think I'm pretty sure I have spoken about him a fair bit this season. Uh, but just a quick look at his stats. That's his second goal of the season with two assists. Far down from last season. His average rating is a lot lower as well. He's a player that's not improved much at all in the past two seasons. Pretty much like Kobayashi, actually. He's not improved that much as Benteke makes it 2-0 for us within five minutes as well. That's fantastic. Lakatsuki is a player that's not particularly improved. Um, his potential is dropping. And although he's one of our own, 
he's not as good as we thought he was going to be at some point. Which now leads me to think he's worth a good 12 million or so. If we can get 15 million or so from him, perhaps 15 million is something we should take and we reinvest that money in another right winger who's decent or another backup or something like that. Because we did say when he was 16 years old, he had bids of about 2, 3 million coming for him at 16 years old. We thought, blimey, if he's getting bids of that much at this age, by the time he's 20, he'll have bids of 15, 20 million. He's now 19, coming on towards 20, towards the end of a season. If we can get that 15, 20 million deal for him at 20 years old, I'd be happy to sell him, I think. It does break my heart a little bit, considering I did tell you he was my Valentine the other day. But it's it's football manager. It's it's a, it's a profit game. We've got to make profit to succeed. If we want to take ourselves to the next level, Lacassette can't be playing there. He's still a championship quality player. He's like the only championship quality player we've got left in the squad. And really, it, that's how my time makes it 3-0. Really, we want to be getting someone in there who's, you know, working towards a leading Premier League player. The, the weak link in the squad. If there's a weak link in the squad, it's Lukasic. And right now, I'm thinking, if he doesn't improve himself the rest of the season, because he's, he's woeful compared to last season, I'm starting to think perhaps it is time to uh, to move him on. Hammer Townsend put forward, though, by Masovic towards the end of his first half, but Ripley is there to make a good save, actually. Probably the first save he's probably had to make. He's let the other ones in, basically. Lukasic now got a chance to get another assist from a corner, but he's not done it. A class classic out to Pandolfi. Pandolfi to Diaz. Diaz just get a shot away. He gets himself blocked, but Pandolfi shot. Saved expertly once again by Ripley as the second half comes towards an end. We've been superb in this first half, actually. If we can keep doing this, if we can maybe get another three in the second half, that is game over. We're in the final. First highlight of the second half now. Looks like it's going towards Brighton as they try and manoeuvre into our area, but Jalapeno clears it. And now we've got a chance to come forward with Gomez. Gomez, can he find a good ball to Diaz? He has found that ball to Diaz. Diaz gets himself fouled in the area. It's a penalty. Hammer time to take it to get his second of the game. Hammer time steps up. Easy. Easy as you like. That is a fantastic penalty. Low, right in the corner. His 25th goal of the season already. What a player he is. Oh, there's, um, there's someone who's back, actually. They've uh, they've returned to me for a little while. I mean, the Brighton just scored, so we don't really care. Um, but this, this, this thing, I don't know why I'm saying thing. That's probably a bit rude, isn't it? They've returned, basically. The tactical dog is back once again with me. Back where she belongs. Doing the tactics for me and things like that. So uh, we'll make some subs in a second. Uh, and we'll decide, well, Tactical Dog will decide what's going on. We'll watch his highlight first. He has on the ball, can't get his ball through, and now Brighton have a chance to come forward once again now, but Kobe actually makes a decent interception. I lost my voice completely then. Uh, Diaz, though, has shot saved. What changes do we need to make? You're telling me Facundo Vieira needs to come on, because you're looking that way, because that obviously means Facundo Vieira, because he's right on the edge here. Can he come on as an attacking midfielder? Not really, but we'll, we'll bring him up front, along with, with Hammer Time, basically. Um, good, good work there, tactical dog. We'll go and support. Who else needs to come on? Hey, who needs to come off? You say. You say give Peter Johnson a rest. Okay, we'll give Peter Johnson a rest. Yen Valerie will come on. Whatever well, changes that we'll make. Thank you, tactical dog. You have been instrumental in winning this game for us. I, I, I've literally just put the dog down to uh, let, let her be free again, and I've just missed an absolute wonder goal from uh, Lukasic. From what I saw, Gomez puts the cross in. Lacassic first time volley straight into the top corner. That is one of the goals of the season. He's clearly heard me say I'm thinking about selling him and he's deciding now to put in a match-winning performance of a 9.3 rating. He's deciding now's the time to start playing. If he plays well for the rest of the season, maybe, maybe I'll change my mind. But right now, I am thinking he'll be gone. I mean, it's been an incredible display so far from us this season. Uh, this game, rather. I mean, this season's been pretty decent, but I meant this game as my head as Lukasic nearly gets his hat trick. He's actually been on fire today. He's clearly heard me. Literally from the first minute when I started talking about it, he heard me and scored a goal. He's now scored another goal. He's on his hat trick now, and he nearly got it there, to be fair to him. Facundo Vieira coming forward on the ball now for us once again. Facundo, the man who's been absolutely incredible this season. Really, really good form. Hits the crossbar from there. Hammer time can't turn it in, but Gomez with a chance now to come forward. Has his shot just why I couldn't quite get the curl on it. But it's been such a professional display from us today. I'm so impressed with us. Hammer time gets on the end of a loose ball from his cross. Puts it into Jalapeno. Jalapeno shot onto Lukasic. Lukasic! Oh, so close once again. Vieira does finish it off. It could be offside. It's not offside. Lukasic, though, so, so close to getting his hat trick twice. He came so... He's been fantastic. I'm not going to lie to you. He's actually been fantastic today. He's changed my mind a little bit. So it's very funny how I said, 
me to sell him and now suddenly you decide to play. Clearly he can hear me. It does work. It does work. The game can hear you. I guarantee it. And there we go. Lincoln 6, Brighton 1. I don't want to be cocky or anything, but I'm pretty sure we are pretty safe going into the uh, into the final. Right, because we've won 6-1, ordinarily I would show you the next Brighton game, basically. But we've won 6-1. I mean, unless Brighton win 5-0, obviously, then they're going to win. But I can't see them winning 5-0. So I don't see them much point showing you that game. Um, I will record it, just in case something crazy does happen. But I reckon instead we do Grimsby in the FA Cup fourth round because it's Grimsby and it's Lincoln City. You've got to do that. And then we do Chelsea after that, I reckon. So I reckon instead of doing the Brighton Grimsby, we'll do Grimsby and Chelsea next time out just because we've absolutely thumped them here today. And I don't think we need to show you that next game. Right, well, thank you very much for watching today's episode. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.